G'day and welcome to the G Spot. If this is your first visit, thanks for joining us. And if you've been here before, a big welcome back. Okay, so welcome to the first video in my new series for fish keepers. This is number one in my basics videos, so let's get on with it. I started working in an aquarium when I was 15 and I've been keeping fish for 50 years. I've kept cold water, fancy goldfish, tropical tank, tropical freshwater, tropical marine. I've propagated corals for sale and uh, over all that time I've come to firmly believe and understand that you must, before entering this hobby, you must understand the nitrogen cycle. But what is it? Well, the nitrogen cycle at its core is all about how bacteria that live on surfaces within your tank react with the chemicals in the water inside your tank. Now there is a very minute amount of bacteria in your water, but understand from the start, it mostly lives on surfaces, including your substrate, the sides of the tank, plants, any decorations you have in there. Um, and it, look, if you don't understand it, you're doomed to waste a lot of money and kill a lot of fish. There are thousands of videos on YouTube and if you Google the nitrogen cycle, you'll find thousands of results there. However, if you want me to do a video explaining the nitrogen cycle and how to cycle your tank in detail please let me know in the comments and uh, if there's enough interest I'll do that. Only bad things happen quickly in this hobby. The more patient you are the better your results are going to be. No question about it. Duckweed is your enemy. It's a curse. It's haunted. It's evil. And you need to avoid it at all costs. Some people will tell you to put duckweed in your aquarium or your pond. I made that mistake and I've now spent three years trying to eradicate it. But if there's a single leaf of duckweed hiding somewhere or stuck to something, it will regenerate and cover your tank, blocking the light from all the plants that need it and giving your tank an awful dull appearance. In my opinion, live plants just look better in your aquarium, providing a much more natural look and a more natural environment for your fish. They increase production of helpful bacteria, particularly in newly established tanks. They remove carbon dioxide from the water and they add oxygen to it as well. They help clarify the water. They utilise unwanted nitrates generated by the nitrogen cycle. They increase overall water quality. 
They can provide an additional source of food for fish and the biofilm that will form on them provides great food for small creatures like shrimp right down to the um, microorganisms. And as I said, they just add tremendously to the beauty of an aquarium. In the Western world, when you get water out of your tap, it has been treated with chlorine. It also contains chloramines. Both of these chemicals are really bad and dangerous for your fish. So you need to get them removed. There's two main ways of doing it. One is to age your water, which means just leaving it in an open top vessel for about 48 hours and the harmful chemicals should evaporate off. But if you're going to use this, method, this method on its own, then I would find some way of testing it because I wouldn't completely trust it. The other way is to use a chemical concoction that's designed to remove these harmful chemicals. Let me say right from the start that fish do not need light. The lights are on the tank for your benefit and to benefit any plants you have. The fish couldn't give us stuff one way or another. Now, too much light is going to create algae in your tank, or algae, depending where you went to school. Um, too little light and your plants will suffer. So I strongly recommend getting a timer to put your lights on and start at about six hours of light continuously per day. You can, if necessary, extend that up to eight, but the first sign of ill effects from too much light just wind it back a bit. Number six, don't overfeed your fish. Opinions vary, but on average, your fish should not be fed more than they can consume totally in a maximum of, say, five minutes. Now, the problem arises when fish food spreads out all over the tank and it's going to take the fish longer than that just to find them. Now, you can just do it by trial and error because you'll soon see the ill effects of overfeeding. Uh, your waste will increase, your water quality will go down, your water clarity will go down. Um, what I do, I use these feeding holders as shown in the picture here. Now they're as ugly as sin, so I don't leave them in, but I put them in for about, oh, I don't know, I put them in about half an hour before I'm going to feed the fish, just so the fish get used to them, and after a while the fish know this is going to be feeding time soon. So anyway, I let it sit there a while, and then I put fish food, a little bit of fish food in the ring. Now over five minutes, every time it disappears, I will put a little bit more, up until five minutes, and that is plenty for your fish on a daily basis. Water changes are absolutely necessary for your fish tank. And some people will do them every week religiously. I don't do that because I keep shrimp in nearly all of my tank 
and shrimp like stability. Stability is much more important for them than stable, well, exact water conditions, and many fish are the same. So what I do, I leave my tank alone unless nitrates exceed 24 parts per million. And then I will do what I call a cleaning procedure. So first I will uh, use a gravel vat to suck up as much muck from the substrate as I can. Um, then I will do a water change of about 25%. And don't worry too much about matching temperatures. I mean, as long as it's within sort of 5 degrees, it's fine. Temperatures fluctuate in the wild and the fish seem to survive. Um, so anyway, whether you do weekly changes or as necessary, uh, that's up to you. But water changes are important and remember you've got to use dechlorinated water or you'll kill your fish. Now I do most of my testing with an API master test kit which I'll show you now. Although I do use electronic devices for some things um, and I've had them since I was keeping corals. I use uh, preci precision devices for pH, total dissolved solids uh, and to be honest I can't quite remember the others just at the moment. Anyway, keep on top of your water changes. And while we're on the subject, while I'm doing the water change and maintenance on my tank, I clean out any filters. Now, do not ever make the mistake of cleaning any sponges, sponge filters, under tap water. Because you'll kill all the good bacteria which is focused in that sponge and your water parameters will go crazy, possibly resulting in the death of fish. So what you do is you do your water change, the water you've taken out of the tank, you put into a bucket and then you rinse your sponges out in that water and that keeps the bacteria alive. Trust me on this, you really need to quarantine all new arrivals. That includes fish, snails, plants, anything at all that's been in the water because they'll often have pest hitchhikers, they can have disease, they can have all sorts of trouble. So what I use is these cheap $10 containers from Kmart. I'll leave a link in the description. They hold 9 litres. They're clear. And being the size they are, I can put them anywhere. Often I'll pop them on my desk in my study with a mini heater in them and then I can watch my fish. You need to keep your fish closely observed and quarantined for at least three weeks, I recommend four. And then if all seems good, you can transfer them to your display tank or tanks. The other advantage of these containers is if you do need to treat the fish, some medications can infiltrate even silicon. For example, if you treat with copper, it can get into the silicon in the tank and for up to 20 years afterward kill small crustaceans including shrimp and snails and what have you because it's toxic to them. These things have no 
silicon you can get into it there's no actual corners they're rounded so you can get into them and clean them easy with hot water and or, or as I do I wash them thoroughly rinse them a few times then spray all the inside with isopropyl isopropyl alcohol that's better and then let that naturally evaporate and that sanitizes everything you can also get these cheap aquarium kits from Kmart and they make great quarantine tanks as well they're also pretty good breeding tanks when you introduce new critters to your tank there's a couple of rules to follow we just covered quarantine and that goes for everything the other thing you need to do when you're putting anything alive into a tank you need to float it for a while about 15 20 minutes to let the temperature in the bag or container and the temperature in the aquarium balance big changes of temperature big sudden changes of temperature can be really bad for creatures then depending on where the fish is coming from there's two methods now if you're just transferring from a quarantine tank to a display tank in your own home as you should be then you can just float the fish get the temperatures adjusted and then pour the contents of your bag or container into a bucket through a net don't ever put the other wa your water where the fish came from into your tank because you risk introducing disease and pests anyway get your creatures into the net and then gently put them into the tank now if you've brought them from an aquarium say and you're putting them in your quarantine tank you still need to float them um, but I recommend then cutting the top off the bag again straining them through a net and dumping them straight in what happens if you've traveled well, let's say an hour the fish keep pooing in the bag that develops ammonia well actually it's a different chemical but the minute you open the bag and let oxygen get in the whole thing becomes toxic soup to the fish so you're better off to get them out quickly another option is to drip acclimatize and this is what i do if transferring from quarantine or from one tank to another at home i let them float to get the temperature right then i'll open the bag or container in a bucket and using an airline with an air stone at one end and a valve at the other i pop the air stone into the tank that acts as a weight and a filter to stop creatures getting sucked up i create a siphon into the bucket uh, sorry into the container that the fish are in and then adjust it so it's dripping about one drip a second and i'll leave that for at least 30 minutes then i do the same thing strain through a net and add them to the fish tank stocking your tank there's two things you want to avoid one is adding too many fish at once and the second is overstocking in general so adding too many fish at once you probably only want to add two or three fish depending on size if they're neons maybe half a dozen but 
limited number of fish with say at least a couple of months before you add more. The reason is you're adding fish that in turn adds bio load when the fish poo and expel CO2 through their gills and the bacteria in your tank have to adjust and in fact they have to grow in numbers to accommodate that. So if you throw like a dozen fish in the tank at once you're probably going to crash your tank and have to start again possibly killing your fish. The second is find an online volume calculator work out the the real water volume of your tank and then do a bit of research don't overstock them like in a a standard two foot tank you don't want a hundred fish so do a bit of research now the more fish you have or the more creatures you have the more bio load and the more work you're going to have to do in terms of water changes and other maintenance to keep those fish happy and it comes to a point where the, if there's too many it's just impossible to satisfy their needs now keep in mind you I have cleanup crews I have snails I have scuds I have uh, shrimp um, I have various types of sucking catfish for example and that's fine they all help clean algae but they don't eat poo and they add their own bio load so you know just when you see those beautiful fish at the fish store stop and think is your quarantine tank set up if so you can buy a couple or a few put them in your quarantine tank depending on its size i've got probably 10 containers I can use as quarantine tanks and then you can probably you know if you're careful keep them in there until they are declared healthy and clean and then maybe add one of each fish each week for a while anyway good luck with your aquarium keeping it's a wonderful hobby and if you've got any questions, I'm always happy to help. So just leave something in the comments. Have a great day.